Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert OET teachers here at E2 Language. What we're going to do in this live class is look at listening part B. I'm going to show you how to approach these question types. Okay, now the sample questions that you're going to see are the official sample questions from the occupationalenglishtest.org website and E2 Language has been given permission to use them to create this video. So thank you OET for that. Okay, what I first want to do is I want to show you the instructions and I want to play you the audio. This is exactly what will happen on test day. Part B. In this part of the test, you'll hear six different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear people talking in a different healthcare setting. For questions 25 to 30, choose the answer A, B or C which fits best according to what you hear. You'll have time to read each question before you listen. Complete your answers as you listen. Okay, now you know what to do. Let me show you what the multiple choice questions look like. So, first, the first part of the question is a context sentence. And this will be read out to you in the audio. It'll say question 25. You hear an optometrist talking to a patient who's trying contact lenses for the first time. This is important. We'll get to that in a minute. Second part of the question is the question prompt. Okay, this is a direct question in that it's a full sentence with a question mark. But it is possible to also see a type of question which is an incomplete sentence. As you can see, there is no question mark and A, B or C will complete the sentence. You will also see three answer options and you can see that the length of the options can change. Here they're quite long, here they're quite short. All right, so how do we approach this question type? First of all, the context sentence is very important because it will locate you in the particular medical setting in which the audio takes place. And most importantly, it's going to tell you who will speak. For question 25, there'll be two people speaking, an optometrist and a patient. It's important that you know who will be speaking because it will help you to uh, guide you through the talking, okay? Sometimes it will be two people, sometimes it will be one person. The question prompt is absolutely critical because it's asking you to listen for something. You need to burn this question into your mind and you will have to read this yourself. It'll say you now have time to read the question. So what is the patient concerned about? What you might want to do is boil it down into a couple of key words. You might want to simplify the question to aid your memory. So what's the patient's concern? What's the patient's concern? Now you have enough time to read the question and the answer options twice before the audio starts playing. And I highly recommend this. So when the speaker says, you now have time to read the question, read the question, read the answer options, read the question again, read the answer options again. Okay. What you want to do now though, as soon as the audio starts playing, you just want to keep the question in mind, not the answer options, okay? You've, you've looked at them, you've got an idea, but now you're listening for something and that is the patient's concern. So what you'll do as soon as that audio starts playing, patient's concern, what's his concern, what's his concern, what's his concern? And you'll be listening for that because all of those answer options will be mentioned, okay? You'll hear those keywords, but they may not be his concern. And then his concern will be mentioned. And then you go, ah, as soon as that audio finishes, you quickly look at A, B, and C. You only have five seconds before the next one starts and you'll circle A, B, or C, okay? So this is how we approach it. It's fast, it's messy. So let's put it into some practice, okay? Oh, sorry, I should go back and say, this is what you're listening for. It's absolutely critical that you get this keyword and you listen for this. Okay, let's practice. On a piece of paper, I want you to write down 25 to 30, and you're going to write A, B, or C next to these numbers. Let's get started. 
Now look at question 25. You hear an optometrist talking to a patient who's trying contact lenses for the first time. Now read the question. Now, you've had the lenses in for a few minutes. How are they feeling? Not bad. I thought I'd feel them actually touching my eyes, that they'd be sore or prickly, but I can't feel much at all. My eyes do feel a bit watery, though. It's OK. You've just used too much solution. Hmm. Now, in a few minutes, I'll get you to try taking them out and inserting them again by yourself. I had no trouble taking them out earlier, but I'm not confident about putting them in. I worry I'll press too hard. That's unlikely to happen. Things look rather distorted, though. I mean, I can't make out the letters on that chart. Any of them? Uh, those lower down. Let's give things another minute to settle down. One, two, three, four, five. Question 26. You hear a nurse asking a colleague for help with a patient. Now read the question. Uh, Kathy, could you help me with the patient in bed 103? The woman who had surgery two days ago. Oh, yes, yeah, she's due for discharge today, isn't she? Does her pain relief need topping up again? I thought she wasn't very comfortable this morning. Oh, she's on a reasonably low dose, but she's coping. Mm. She needs her chest drains removing, though, and she's got herself into a bit of a state. Ah, well, that's a two-person job anyway, so I'll come with you. Has the consultant seen her? I know there was some concern yesterday about her condition mm. and the level of the fluids draining into the bags. Oh, uh, he's cleared her for removal of them today, but I think some reassurance might be needed first. Right. I might just check her analgesia and give her more before we go ahead. OK. One, two, three, four, five. OK, just before we move on to question three, I just wanted to... I was counting there because, again, you have five seconds, then it moves on. So you need to be quick. Now, I just want to recap this approach again with you. So what you'll do is you'll listen very intently to the context sentence. This time you're going to hear a nurse asking a colleague. OK, but particularly you're going to be listening for the nurse or why does the nurse need help? That's critical. You'll have enough time to read this question and the answer options twice before it starts playing. But then critically, once the audio starts playing, you go back to the question prompt and you're asking yourself, why does the nurse need help? Why does the nurse need help? Okay. Then when it finishes, you quickly scan A, B or C and you'll circle the correct answer. So let's try it again. Question 27. You hear a senior nurse talking about a new initiative that has been introduced on her ward. Now read the question. One of our key priorities is improving communications between staff, patients and patients' families. We recently introduced a scheme called Dear Doctor, which involves giving each patient a card where they can make a note of any questions or concerns that they themselves have. They can also talk to their families during visiting time or even on the phone and see if there's anything else they'd like to add. The cards are then collected and given to the doctor before the ward round. We're really pleased with the response. Patients used to say that they only thought of the things they felt they needed to discuss when it was too late, so the cards give them a better chance to bring up whatever's on their minds. In fact, it's been so successful that we're going to roll it out on all wards in the hospital. One, two, three, four, five. Question 28. You hear two radiologists 
talking about the type of scan to be given to a patient. Now read the question. I've just had a phone call from emergency. They have an 11-year-old boy with right lower quadrant abdominal pain. They're concerned about appendicitis and they'd like to order an abdominal CT for him. Hmm. Do you think that's a good idea? I was thinking maybe we should recommend an abdominal ultrasound because then we can spare him the radiation. Is there any concern in this case around using ultrasound instead of CT? Accuracy, for example. The sensitivity is slightly less than the CT, but the specificity is almost the same, so I think we can rely on the results. OK. It means we can avoid the child being subject to contrast exposure as well. But what would we do if the ultrasound doesn't answer the question? If we can't visualise the complete appendix, then we can recommend an abdominal CT. OK. We have a plan. Call them back and let them know. One, two, three, four, five... Question 29. You hear part of a surgical team's briefing. Now read the question. OK, next is Mr Malloy's repeat laparotomy. Any anaesthesia issues? We don't expect any particular problems. He's relatively fit and well, except for his epilepsy, which is under good control. Mm -hmm. His BMI is 35. But will we need the obesity bed? It shouldn't be an issue. And what about the epilepsy post-operative management? He's taking his oral medications and we can use an IV if necessary. I know he was in a lot of discomfort after his last surgery, and this time he's going to need a larger midline incision. It may be worth thinking about an epidural. He's certainly at the extremely low edge in terms of pain threshold. One, two, three, four, five. Last one, guys. Here we go. Question 30. You hear a senior research associate talking about a proposal to introduce interprofessional primary healthcare teams. Now read the question. We're looking at opportunities to improve the effectiveness of health and healthcare systems here in Canada. One of the interventions we're looking at is interprofessional primary care teams, groups of professionals working together collaboratively to provide services including healthcare, social services, and advice to patients within the primary care setting. There's evidence that teams like these can improve chronic disease outcomes including diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease, as well as mental health problems. There's also evidence that improvements can be made in terms of both access to and coordination of care. Now, the extent to which these teams could affect the costs of health care in such areas isn't quite clear within the evidence, but the work we're doing aims to address such issues while looking at the challenges of implementation and evaluation. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. How did you go doing that? There's a lot going on, isn't there? You have to concentrate while the context sentence is written out to work out who will speak. Then you read that question very carefully. You can read both the question prompt, the answer options twice. Once the audio starts playing, you go back to that question prompt because that is what you're listening for. As soon as you hear that and the audio finishes, you go quickly scan the answer options again, of which you will already be familiar. Choose A, B, or C. Just circle the letter. Cool. All right. Just before we move on to the answers, if you are not yet a subscriber on our YouTube channel, click that subscribe button down there. 
because every time we create a video, you'll be the first to know about it. It will send you a notification so you can watch it immediately. Plus, if you're enjoying this, I want you to uh, click like as well. Okay, let's go through the answers. 25, the optometrist talking to a patient about contact lenses, what was the patient concerned about? Well, you can see here that each of those answer options were actually mentioned. Let's look at B, soreness in, sorry, I should say soreness in his eyes. Patient says, not bad, I thought I'd feel them actually touching my eyes, that they'd be sore or prickly, but I can't feel much at all. So is he concerned about the soreness? No. What about C, that's mentioned. Is he concerned about how to remove the lenses? I had no trouble taking them out earlier. No. Is he concerned about blurred vision? Yes. If we look carefully, the answer is A, because the patient says, things look rather distorted though. I mean, I can't make out the letters on that chart. That's what he's concerned about. Blurred vision, if we look here, blurred and distorted are the synonyms and I can't make out the letters on the chart to do with vision there. So if you got A for 25, well done. Let's have a look at the next one. You hear a nurse asking a colleague for help with the patient. Why does the nurse need help? Again, all of them are mentioned, but only B is correct. The patient is worried about a procedure. It says she needs her chest drains removing though, and she's got herself into a bit of a state but I think some reassurance might be needed first. So the patient is worried about a procedure. Now, it was mentioned that the patient's con about the patient's condition. It didn't mention that it's deteriorated though. And also the patient's level of pain was mentioned, but this is what, she doesn't need help because of this. So the answer is B, she's worried about, or he's worried about the procedure. Um, she needs her chest drains removing though, and she's got herself into a bit of a state, and I think reassurance might be needed first. 27, you hear a senior nurse talking about a new initiative that has been introduced on her ward. What problem is the new initiative intending to solve? The answer is C, patients not discussing all their concerns when meeting a doctor. If we look carefully, the female says a scheme called Dear Doctor, which involves giving each patient a card where they can make a note of any questions or concerns that they themselves have. Patients used to say they only thought of the things they felt they needed to discuss when it was too late. So the cards give them a better chance to bring up whatever's on their minds. The answer is C. The problem that it solves is patients not discussing all their concerns when they meet the doctor. 28. You hear two radiologists talking about a scan. They agree to choose the method which will what? The answer is C, have the fewest risks for the patient. A and B are mentioned, but not in this context. So if we look carefully, the fewest risks for the patient are mentioned when the female says, we can spare him the radiation. And the male says, it means we can avoid the child being subject to contrast exposure as well. So that's why they choose the method that will have the fewest risks for the patient. 29, you hear part of a surgical team's briefing. The male surgeon suggests that the patient could what? B, benefit from a specific anesthetic procedure. The male says, I know he was in a lot of discomfort after his last surgery and this time he's going to need a larger midline incision. It may be worth thinking about an epidural. He's certainly at the extremely low edge in terms of pain threshold. The male surgeon suggests that the patient could benefit from a specific anesthetic procedure. Again, the other options were mentioned, but they were incorrect or contradictory. It was only B that was right. All right, question number 30. You hear a senior research associate talking about a proposal to introduce interprofessional primary healthcare teams. The question prompt here is critical. It says, what hasn't been established about the teams yet? If you look into the transcript there, it says now the extent to which these teams could affect the costs of healthcare in such areas isn't quite clear, hasn't been established within the evidence, but the work we're doing aims to address such issues. The answer there is 
B, the financial impact that they're likely to have, and forgive my spelling mistake there on female. Okay, how did you go, by the way? What score did you get? Put your score into the comments below so everybody can see, so you all feel better if you're doing well or doing bad or whatever, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you now understand what you're looking at, what you're going to see on test day, and you've got a bit of an idea of a good approach to this question type. Now you'll probably need more practice. So if you do need more practice, check out e2language.com. We are a premium preparation provider, one of the few premium preparation providers by the OET. Uh, if you do sign up, you can sign up for free and you can think about upgrading your account for uh, more practice tests, more methodology practice, skill building practice, uh, writing subtests, feedback on your writing subtests, one-on-one -on -one tutorials, access to all of the recorded live classes, as well as the live, live classes, the live, live classes, I like that. Anyway, there's lots of, that you can do at e2language.com, so do think about checking out that website. Anyway, hope that was helpful, hope you learned something, and hopefully you got a good score. Thank you.